it is now Friday. Getting close to another big storm that's supposedly coming in Saturday afternoon, Saturday night into Sunday morning. Um, was watching the weather this morning. It looks more of a uh, central Florida storm, Tallahassee to the east. Um, but I was right on the line, so I decided to chance it and get back on the trail. It was a good two day rest, um, hot shower, got some editing done, was able to premiere the first uh, part one of this series on the Pan Handle Adventure Trail. So now I'm out, I'm heading towards Tate's Hell State Forest. And there's a pretty interesting story on that one and I'll tell you when I get there. So I'm cruising into, uh, I'm in Tate's Hell right now and I'm finding that there's some dispersed camping along the way. And I went by one camp spot right along the river. And there was somebody there. It was a beautiful spot. And I'm looking at two more coming up. So let's see what they, uh, see if they're occupied and what they look like. Yup, just as I thought. I'm coming up on the second campsite in Tate's Hell on the map. And that's occupied as well. Looks like I wasn't the only one with this idea. And it looks like a lot of these campgrounds people have been set up for a while. Which, hey, more power to you. I'm sure that uh, nobody bothers them way out here. I mean, it looks like this guy's been set up for a while. He's got like a dog kennel set up for Christ's sakes. Why not? It's beautiful weather out. You're isolated, you're all alone. I'd set up too. example of a washout you can see right there that this was underwater at one time and there's a big hole right there and if you're coming through that and you hit that hole and say there's four feet of water there you're gonna knock your teeth loose and let me tell you you might knock your teeth loose but you might also get stuck pretty crazy out here is um, there's a lot of water there's more water here than I've seen so far and I'm, I'm ahead of a storm that's coming in it's supposed to be a pretty doozy in the Gulf Coast and let me tell you I wanted to get out here because I knew this place was flooded and just back there I got on video the road just kind of ended and looked like a pond and when I went over the river I could see why everything was so swollen but I just went through it. I videoed it, I went through it, you know, and I was just like anxiety out, whatever. But I'm on the other side now, so we're gonna keep going, and we're gonna be going that way uh, through Taytel. And...
There was no road left there. Wow. So, I think I'm losing my fear of water crossings because that was the longest one I've done. And yeah, that was pretty deep. You can see the water was, water was up to there, up to my doors. Wow. But I knew it came out somewhere and there's an intersection right here. Woo! Crazy. Here we go again. Why not? Let me tell you, I just finished Tate's Hell down there. And man, let me tell you, I pushed myself through my comfort zone. There was some serious deep water crossings and a lot of mud. This whole road took me about an hour to get down and it was literally just completely mudded out. I mean, I don't know. I've gone four wheeling in Jeeps before and stuff like that, but doing it in a 10,000 pound truck with my cabin on the back, it's a whole different ball game. You can't go flying through that stuff because that cabin's just gonna rip right off my truck. Craziness though, but let me tell you, Tate's Hell, Franklin County, Florida. If you wanna challenge yourself, take a ride down in there. So let me tell you the story of Tate's Hell. So back in 1870, there was a local farmer that lived out there by the name of Tate. And there was a panther bothering his livestock. So him and his dog went out one day to go hunt this panther while he got lost out in Tate's hell. And he got bitten by a snake. Seven days later, he appeared out of the forest and the first person he came across to give him water and see if he was okay he said, I got lost for seven days. I was bitten by a snake and I had to drink murky water to quench my thirst. It was hell. And that's the legend of Tate's hell. So, like I said, it's living up to its name with the murky deep waters, the mud. I wasn't bitten by a snake, but it was still hell for me. Top of the morning, um, it's Saturday. It's a little past uh, eight o'clock. I broke camp at first light this morning because that, uh, that big storm's supposed to be moving through around lunchtime today. And the weather I watched this morning didn't really predict it hitting up this area that bad. Less than an inch of rain, Tallahassee West. So, but still, I broke camp first light. I've been on the trail for about a half hour. Ah, a lot of hunters, the first part of the trail. I'm getting deeper into it now and I haven't seen anybody. I'm also heading, uh, I'm heading southwest, which brings me basically to the northwest corner of Tate's Hell, where yesterday I went through that mud waller and um, I'm anticipating some mud. So fingers crossed, I get through it no problem. Um, try to get through Apalachicola today. Um, and, and hopefully if I can do this today, I can uh, be camping out at this uh, waterfall that Florida has, tallest waterfall in Florida. So, fingers crossed, I make it through pretty uh, effortlessly today. So 
we are deep into Apalachicola right now. And the one thing I can say that's different from this national forest and like Ocala or something is these are more trail-like roads, not well-maintained. Um, like Osceola and Ocala, they're very like, you know, graded. So you could go pretty fast. But here, this is what we're getting a lot of, is little water crossings, um, you know, very rocky at the bottom. Like somebody beat me to this one. Just wide enough to get through. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I don't feel like driving around because I, I I went through a lot of shit through Tate's hell yesterday. Oh yeah? Oh my god, was that a was there a lot of people down there? Not it was underwater. Oh I'm sure. You know, they're gonna get another four or five inches today. I know, I know, I know. It's gonna be a damn mess, is what it's gonna be. I'm trying to get to Camel Pond just to camp out through the storm. It's a nice little place. Is it? Yeah. Is there a campground there? Yeah, yeah, there's a campground. Oh, cool. Now, I don't know if you have to preserve or anything, but I'm sure they'll have plenty of spots. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice these local hunters we walked down to where they said the bridge was out and looked at it so we can go across this so everybody seems to be getting across it okay we'll see if I get across it okay So I finished up Apalachicola and I felt like treating myself to a lunch because I haven't really gone out to eat much. And uh, I stopped at this place called Fiddler's. Whew, really good food at a good price. It was 18 bucks and I had a burger and some fries. And then I saw this out here and I says, I gotta go check this out. Really cool, really cool history. And they got it all decked out. I just, it's hard to feel Christmassy in Florida, but they got all the Christmas lights on it. It's cool. Now, if this was in like a snow setting, it'd be really neat. Apalachicola was very slow, more trail-like than road-like, and a lot of mud and water. Uh, Tate's Hell. Tate's hell was hell. That's all I got to say about that. But now, part three is complete. And now we're heading out to Florida State Caverns and Florida's largest waterfall. So stay tuned for that one on part four. Mm -hmm.